Okay, so today the, uh, the only real difference between what we talked about yesterday and today is uh, yesterday we talked about sequences, which just basically show a set of numbers occurring one after the other. Today we're going to look at series, which is when we're adding the numbers up. So in this case, they're just a list of numbers for a sequence, and the sum of the numbers makes a series. Okay. So um, <clears throat> the first formula we're going to take a look at, I will show you where this formula comes from. Um, what you're going to notice is that as we go further into this course, I'll be slowly and gently trying to bring more of this into the course, because next year when you go to university, your professor is not quite so concerned that, oh yeah, you can stick numbers in a formula and get the answer. They're more concerned to see that you understand where these formulas come from. So um, we do a little bit of this stuff, and if, as we get into calculus, we do a little more. So here's where the formula, one way you can get this formula and understand why it works. Okay? So if I had S, and this is, I'm just calling this my sum. Okay? So the terms in a sequence would be A, AR, AR squared, AR cubed, all the way up until the last term, which would be ARN minus 1. If I take the same sum and I go sum and I multiply it by the common ratio, then what that does is that moves everybody over by one term. So what used to be A, I have to multiply everybody by the common ratio. So A moves over 1, AR moves over 1, everybody in this moves over 1. Uh, whoops. And uh, that also means I'm going to end up with one extra term here. Now the reason why I wanted to do that is then if I subtract these two, something nice happens. Yeah, so if I do a subtraction, that means that cancels out, cancels out, cancels out. And all I'm left with is the first term and this term here. So I get S take away SR is A minus ARN. Okay, so that was the reason why, is now all those terms disappear, and I only have four things. So if I want to figure out what the sum is, I'm going to factor this S out. So the sum, um, and now it's easy to solve. The sum equals A minus ARN over 1 minus R. Okay, but usually the way you're going to see it appear on the formula sheet would be like this. So again, uh, it's a good idea that you understand why things work and how they work. This is why the, the sum formula works. You can trace it back to this little derivation that we just did. But of course, it does appear on the exam sheet, so not to panic. Um, it is provided. You won't have to do that if it comes down to a question for you. Okay. So let's just uh, see how this formula works. One nice thing about this formula compared to the uh, sequences formula is if you have n terms, then n appears in the formula. It's not an n minus 1 like the term formula. So it's kind of nice that way. Um, for the first one, here's the first term. What's the common ratio? Yeah, from term, any term divided by the previous, common ratio is 3. So if I want to use the sum formula here, that means the sum of 10 terms is the first term. 1 minus 3 to the 10 over 1 minus 3. Now, of course, unless you're really good, you're going to need a calculator. So uh, 1 minus 3 to the 10 divided by 1 minus 3, I get 29, 5, 2, 4. Okay? So all in all, not too bad. Okay, so give this one a try here. 2 thirds negative 2 plus 6 minus 18. What would that uh, series sum up to? Okay, so um, if you work this into the sum formula, we're looking for 10 terms again. First term is 2 thirds. Um, the common ratio this time is negative 3. Oh, kind of running out of room here. So uh, let's see here. Of course, I need a calculator for this. I end up with uh, 2 thirds, 1 minus negative 3 to the 10. So, let's see here. 
Is that right? I end up with negative 9, 8, 4, uh, 1.3. Can anybody confirm that? Yeah, okay. The trick here, too, is that you, you make a lot of careless mistakes in your calculator quite easily, so. Okay. So, like uh, sequences, there's, you know, there's a standard set of questions you should be able to answer. Uh, one of the ones that comes out of this as well is, what if I give you a series, but some terms in the middle are missing? Okay, the, the equivalent question was, how many terms are there in this sequence? Right, and you had to solve for, to figure it out. So the same problem kind of comes up, because we've got the first term, and we can see the common ratio by taking any term divided by its previous, but I still don't know how many terms there are. So it would look like I, I have some problems here, and I'd have to solve for how many terms there are. But one nice thing, if we go back up to this, the uh, formula, okay, if we look at this last step we were at right here, this is like um, the last term in the sequence. So if I have n terms, it's going to be a, r, n minus 1. That will be the last term in a sequence with n terms. Yeah, I know it's all letters, but just bear with me. So what this is, is this is the first term minus the last term times another common ratio. So if I put another r in here, I get r to the n. So the reason that that's nice to deal with is now I don't need to know how many terms I have. I just need to know the first and the last terms, and I can figure out what the sum is. You have a question there, DJ? Sure? Yeah, I'm sure you're not the only one. Why don't we take just a quick peek at it again then? Okay, so the, um, the sequence, if you have n terms, this, is, this was the whole thing over here. So let me clutter, unclutter some of that. So here's the uh, a se a sequence with n terms, and this is the last term. Right? If I had 10 terms, I multiplied 9 times. If I have n terms, I multiply n minus 1 times. So the last term is this here. Okay. So um, the spot we ended up at was here, uh, where the star is. And uh, what I said was, this is very similar to the last term. Because the last term would be a r n minus 1. I have to add one more r. So this is the last term times the common ratio. Okay. So probably not as crystal clear as, but it'll get there. So. Okay, so the reason that, that formula is helpful, um, this one here, where L is the last term, is because now when I work with this series, uh, I don't need to know how many terms there are. I just need to know the first and the last. So the sum of the n terms here is 125 minus um, 1 over 1, 5, 6, 2, 5, the last term, times the common ratio, which is negative 1 fifth. Oops, did I get that right? Yeah, I think so. Okay, and it'll be divided by 1 minus negative 1 fifth. So again, uh, grab my calculator. So I end up with uh, 104.167, say. Okay. So those are the two formulas that appear on the exam sheet. Both of them have you know, their merits. If you don't know how many terms there are, this is the one you're going to want to use here. The one that we had before is the formula that you're going to refer to if you don't know the last term, but you know how many terms there are. Okay. So. Let's take a look at how you might be expected to use some of these formulas. Maybe not as straightforward. But uh, in the first, first example here, you're given the general term. This is what generates your sequence. Uh, and find the sum of the first 15 terms. Okay. So this time around, if we want sum of 15 terms, it's going to be 1 minus r to the 15 over 1 minus r. 
So all we need to find is the common ratio and the first term. So luckily, since they gave us the term formula, we can see the first term here and the common ratio here. So that would be 5 times 1 minus 2 to the 15 over 1 minus 2. So I get uh, 1, 6, 3, 8, 3, 5. Okay. So another way that we might uh, be expected to come up with using that sum formula, uh, very similar to last days, you might be given the series and you might be asked if this is the series and it adds up to this much, how many terms are there? So we're going to follow the same idea that we did last day. If this is the answer to the sum, that means 4, 7, 8, 2, 9, 6, 8 should be equal to the first term times 1 minus the common ratio to however many terms I have over 1 minus the common ratio. So I end up with a little equation that I have to solve. Um, may involve logs because I'm looking for the exponent here. So I'll let you try to work through it and see if you can figure out how many terms there are. Okay, so I believe I end up with uh, negative 4, 7, 8, 2, 9, 6, 8 equals 1 minus 3 to the n. And if I do a little change up, I think I have something like this. And I don't know what that number is. Uh, it's quite large, so I probably would use a logarithm here to help me figure it out. So I go log in base 3, uh, which will mean change a base rule. Sorry, 2, 9, 6, 9 over log of 3. So it looks like there are 14 terms in that sum. Okay. Sorry, I'm in the way. It's okay, you can just say it. I'll, I'll move. Let's take a look now. There's one other thing that we'll take a look with the formula. So this time it says uh, the fifth term in this is 1,024. The common ratio is 4. Find the sum for seven terms. So see if you can take the information you've got and work out enough of it to uh, come up with the sum of seven terms. Okay, so sum of seven, you're going to have 1 minus r to the 7 over 1 minus r. Okay, so I'll let you work it out. See if you can come up with those missing pieces. Okay, so you can kind of follow along with uh, I have here, double check it. And what do we have now? Four. So now I have enough of the pieces. I know that the first term is four and the common ratio is four. So that should be enough to get me an answer. <coughs> 4 times 1 minus 4 to the 7, divided by 1 minus 4. So I end up with uh, 21,844. Can anybody confirm that? Excellent, thank you, because I've been known to make the odd mistake here and there. 